What's up, Pit fans? Thank you so much for tuning in to Inside the Panthers on YouTube. My name is Steven Thompson. I'm here with another Inside Pit post-game report, and I have the unfortunate privilege of breaking down whatever the hell just happened on that field in Winston-Salem, which was a stunning 21-17 to loss to Wake Forest for the Pit Panthers. And, uh, you know, we'll kind of break this down a little bit. We'll start with the with the macro and then get a little bit more into the finer details, starting with the bigger picture of how the rest of the season will go. And I think I said after the Louisville game that I thought bowl eligibility was still on the table for this team. I thought that they had proven that they could maybe make a run and, and salvage this year, but I'm not really sure. I think that anymore. Um, this was one that you absolutely needed to have. If you were going to try to make the postseason, if you're the Pitt Panthers and we well, lost, uh, but very simply, uh, you also look down the line at the schedule and, it really only gets harder. And I'm not just talking about, you know, Notre Dame and Florida state and even Duke, uh, who's up on Florida state right now on the road right now. Uh, they're looking borderline elite. Um, but Boston college went again today. Like th they have a dangerous quarterback and they're above 500 Virginia. I, I think has a three point lead over North Carolina. As I record this, uh, you're really going to struggle to find one or even two more wins on the rest of the schedule. If you're pit, um, that said, I don't, I don't think we we learned anything new. I don't think we know, or I, I shouldn't say that. I, I don't think we look at this team as any better or any worse after the Wake Forest game. Uh, you know, compared to the Louisville game, um, I think we thought you know they are a better team after that Louisville game. But I don't think we saw anything that indicates this team is either better or worse than we thought they were after that Louis, Louisville game. But you know, you didn't execute and you didn't come up with a win in a game that you couldn't bear to lose. So these are kind of the consequences of it. Um, they're maybe not a better or worse team than they were, but uh, they're in a worse spot for sure. And like I said, this was one that you just needed to have. This was a game that you were favored in. You're not going to get many of those chances uh, going down the, the rest of the season. So you'd have to really pull out some miracles to try and see bowl eligibility in the future for this team. Do you want to look at some positives, positives as well? Because there were, you know, parts of this game that I, I thought were, were good. Um, you know, Christian Bayer, he seems like a dude now. Um, is and he was especially great in big moments. Uh, Twenty eight of forty five for three hundred two yards and two touchdowns. He was ten of fourteen for one hundred thirty four yards and a touchdown on third downs. He used his legs well in spots. I thought he spread the ball around and again he played turnover free football, which is, you know. That was a little bit of the bare minimum that you expected, but it's impressive he's been able to do the, do it for so long. And you know he's even started to look like a guy that I think this team can really start to lean on. I mean, he threw forty five times for for God's sakes. Um, you know this is this is a guy that I think they can trust, and I think you understand what the competition was, but the passing game has taken such a huge step forward uh, with him at the helm, and I think he can really be a centerpiece, not just a game manager, um, especially right now. I mean, I thought. You know, there was definitely some potential, but I didn't, you know, really, I think, expect much in terms of, oh, does he have the ability to win you games? You know, can he go out there and, and I don't know, just like, you know, make things happen for you. I, I didn't, uh, you know, I, I thought he could not lose you games, but I didn't know if he could go out and win you games. And I think he does have the ability to win you games right now and be a difference maker right now, just not kind of ride the defense and, and count on some big plays here and there. Because uh, that was the other thing, I mean, the big plays were really all he did well against Louisville. You know, he didn't turn the ball over. That's true. But, you know, he was less than 50% uh, completion percentage. And a lot of that was because he was missing those short and intermediate throws. He was doing really well with the deep balls, but uh, he bounced back in a big way and was able to hit some of those short throws as well. He's really showing a much more complete skill set, I think. Um, and, you know, I thought the defense was good too. Um, I think you – you take into account the competition again, uh, but they did kind of what I expected against the third string quarterback. Uh, they fell apart a little bit late. Um, you know, gave him some big run plays, committed four penalties that were important. Um, and then obviously the, that touchdown at the end. Uh, but I, I was pretty encouraged. Uh, MJ Devonshire continues to look like really special. Thought Marquez Williams and the other corners played well. Uh, three tackles for loss and two sacks from AJ Woods, just kind of out of nowhere that uh, actually moved him, I think into second he's the second highest total uh, of sacks on the team with two now um but nine tackles for loss as a team uh hayes and uh, dayon hayes and david green i believe had two each yeah if, I, if i'm remembering that correctly but they they both contributed in big ways and 
I, I think the ending soured what was a pretty decent performance from this defense, which I think is just as good as we thought after the Louisville game. Um, they are they are capable of hanging with the best of them. Um, I think they they certainly have the talent to do so. And you give up twenty one points, I, I think you should win that game. Quite honestly, uh, you know, for Pitt to only to Pitt to have gained, I think four hundred and fourteen total yards, and to only score seventeen points that that can't happen. Um, that's you got to help your defense out a little bit more than that. And uh, yeah, I think that we're having a different conversation if, you know, obviously if the offense scores, you know, one more, one more touchdown or something like that. But, you know, I think we're talking about the defense in a different way. If uh, you know, some other things go differently throughout that game. And that is not a perfect transition, but it is, does lead me to my final point, which is that we've got to talk about the slide uh, that slide of the game. Uh, you know, Christian Vare running on third down. Looked like he got a first down. Uh, he had no one around him, but slid a little bit early, uh, and he was ruled down before the marker. Uh, Pitt was backed up way in their own territory. There was less than a minute left. They could have knelt, knelt the ball out. Uh, they could have, uh, you know, really iced the game. That's what I thought they did, but they had, ended up having to punt it away, and you know the rest of the story. I think by the letter of the law, that is the it was the right call. I don't think there's really any debating that. Uh, you may have an argument that he took a step or two over the line, but I understand why it went Wake's way. You could kind of see him start to drop his hips and his butt, and that looks like the start of a slide. That said, I don't know if this that call really reflected the spirit of the rule, which is the Kenny Pickett rule. Kind of ironic. This kind of comes back to bite them, especially in a game against Wake. But, you know, no defender gave up on the play because Vayer – uh, you know, looked like he was about to slide, and that's what allowed him to gain a first down. Uh, there was no player safety motive behind this. Like I said, uh, this rule didn't really protect it, or this call, I, I should say, didn't really protect against anything. Instead, it just caught a team that was in control and had made the right play in a close game. It caught him on a technicality, and it gave the game away. Um, that sucks, but you know that, that that's how the cookie crumbles sometimes. Like I said, it was the right call. Um. So you can't necessarily complain about uh, about the call, but I think beyond this game, you can have a little bit of a conversation about, okay, when this rule is applied, what is it being applied for? You know, what are we trying to guard against? Uh, are we are we doing something productive with this rule? And you know, in my opinion, like it's, I don't know, like I said, I feel like Pitt got caught in a technicality, which is the worst way to lose, and that that makes things a little bit more bitter to swallow but you know it, it's it's something that you know other people will have uh you know people above my pay grade will have about the rule and just how to make sure it's applied correctly and sometimes a, a call like that which is definitely a judgment call will bounce differently one with one ref than it will with another ref and sometimes you just have to live with that and then on top of that there are of course plenty of ways that Pitt could have avoided putting this game into the hands of a subject into or, or, or letting this game get to the point where it's decided by a subjective call from a referee. Uh, you know, you could not get uh, consecutive unsportsmanlike con conduct penalties after that interception from NJ Devonshire. Uh, you know, Vayer could have dove instead of slid and probably still have gotten pit into a good enough point where they could have mostly iced the game. Uh, you could not punt so poorly that you set up Wake with good field position after that slide. Uh, you could also not play really bad offense for, you could also not go scoreless for, uh, you know, what probably amounts to, I think, 60% of that game, if not more. Uh, they had a field goal from Ben Sauls, I think, early in the fourth quarter uh, before that last touchdown drive. Uh, you do any one of those three things, and we're having a completely different conversation. Uh, you know, this is a completely different mood, a completely different conversation about this team, and we're all much happier. So, I get it. You don't, you know, the call is the call and, and that's what the game comes down to when two teams play mostly even for for 59 minutes and then a game is is mostly decided on that. Uh, it, it can feel pretty big, you know, it can be tough to swallow. But again, there's a lot of things that Pitt can control to to not put themselves in that kind of situation again. I do want to reiterate the punting was really bad in, in a way that uh, you'd notice when punting affects the game, you know, like punting has to be really bad to, to affect a game like this. And it did. Caleb Junker was not very good. I don't have his official stats on, on average length of kick, but 
uh, there were so many times where the defense was just put in bad positions. Uh, Wake was given good field positions because of the punting. I just want to touch on that uh, before I got out of here. But with that, I am headed out of here. Thanks so much for tuning into another Inside Pit po- uh, post game report. Make sure to stay tuned for us as we start the next week. Uh, look ahead to that Notre Dame game. I'll be in South Bend. Take that one and deliver some live coverage for you. But make sure to like this video and subscribe to us on YouTube. That's youtube.com slash at Inside the Panthers. And then find all of reporting from pit practices and games at InsideThePanthers.com. Appreciate y'all tuning in. And until next time, I'll see you.